Hi everyone, welcome to The Pen Habit. I'm Matt Armstrong, and in today's Ink Spot review, we're going to be talking about Franklin Christoph Tenebris Perperatum. Now, uh, by way of disclaimer, I did receive a sample of Tenebris Perperatum from Franklin Christoph at the DC Pen Show. Uh, this was an ink they just announced in August of 2015, so it's a new ink. Um, it kind of, kind of replaces their Deep Purple, their Franklin Kristoff Deep Purple. Um, this is no longer available, uh, so if you want a purple ink from Franklin Kristoff, Tenebris Purpuratum is, uh, is where it comes from. They, clearly they've got someone who likes Latin, I think. <laughs> on staff. So, uh, very interesting ink. I like it. There's some things I don't care for about it, but I, for the most part, I like it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write on my Rhodia dot pad as I normally do with a variety of different pens, and then I will walk you through some of the other tests I did and show you some comparables. Now, Starting with season three, I'm cutting back the workload on these ink reviews so I can do a little bit more of them. So I used to do a quick review, or I used to do a full-blown review of Rhodia, T Tomoe River, and cheap copy paper. I am not going to do the cheap copy paper full bore. I will do a couple quick writings on there so you can see what happens with a regular medium pen, but I'm not going to do the full write-up on all three sheets of paper. I just can't spend that much time on it. So, for those of you who really loved seeing how an ink performed or didn't on cheap copy paper, I'll try to appease you with at least a little bit, hint of it, but not the full-blown uh, review, because mama just ain't got more time. So, okay, here we go. Uh, let me go through and write from fine to very broad with uh, a Rhodia dot pad to start off with. So, we will start off, this is fine here. And this is a Jinhao uh, 599. For medium, we have a Lamy Vista. For broad, a Lamy All Star in the stub world. Let's see, we have a one point five millimeter stub, and this is a Twisby Vac seven hundred. You are looking for a wider stub. We have a 3.8. And I won't try to write this all pretty because Pilot Parallels. So you can see it, particularly here, there's a lot of, sh you know, when you get some pooling, you get some pretty decent shading on this ink. Uh, okay, in the flex world, where's my flex here? We have a this is a Waterman's Again, I'm not going to go pretty on this right now. Ideal number seven. And I just happened to have a uh, 1.9 millimeter. This is the music nib on the Franklin Kristoff Model 2. Pretty wet nib as well. Okay, so very quickly, you can see this is a, it is kind of a, a, a purple that leans toward the bluish violet hue, um, a little dusty in color, not the deepest purple I've ever seen, but pretty shady. Um, it shades quite a bit. Uh, 
I like this, what I get out of here and here a lot more than I like what I get out of here and here. Um, I don't find the light version of this, the drier version of this, to be particularly up my alley uh, when it comes to, to the color of purple I like. Um, if you look at a comparison, one of my favorite purples, let me see here, ah, here it is. Uh, we have um, Deatramentus aubergine. Um, and you can see, hopefully you can see, that this has a bit more of a red hue to it. This is a very wet pen. So you may not be able to see it in the video here, but I'll try to take some photos. Um, this has more of a red hue to it, and those are the purples I tend to like a little bit more. The ones that, you know, like the Mont Blanc Lavender Purple or the Pelican Edelstein Amethyst that I say look kind of like blueberry pie filling. I like that purple more than the, the slightly more violet purples. Um, it is also tends to run a little on the dry side for me. It's, it's not a, a, an ink that feels super lubricated. It doesn't feel scratchy or dry or like it doesn't flow. It's just not as lubricated to me as some other inks. One other quick thing that I wanted to do before we moved on to the, the bigger test is show you what this, this ink does on very poor paper. So uh, here is fine. This is the Jinhao. 599. Really no feathering there at all. This, this ink works pretty well in terms of the feathering. We'll check bleed through in a minute. Uh, let me do medium and broad as well to give you a sense of that. Medium. Uh, it's the Lamy Vista. And broad is the Lamy All-Star. And then just to wrap things up a little bit, here is the uh, 1.5 millimeter. And this is the Twisby Vac 700. So overall, this paper seems to be doing pretty darn well with the, um, with the ink. I'm not getting a ton of feathering. I'm not getting a ton. I'm getting some bleed through. You can see a little bit of bleed through here, um, but not as much show through as you would expect. So in general, this ink does tend to do pretty well on cheap copy paper. And this is just Staples 75 uh, GSM paper. Uh, one other quick thing before we dive into the full uh, review, I wanted to show you the chromatography. So you can see that there's a, a, a long blue trail left behind, a bit of purple in here, some real red, and then kind of a nice uh, turquoisey blue up at the top with a very, with a dark, almost cerulean uh, leading edge to the ink. So um, not a terribly complex ink, but still, you know, you can see where that bluish side of the purple hue comes from. The blue certainly does outweigh the red quite a bit. Okay, let's dive into the full reviews. So I'll start with the, um, the Rhodia dot pad, so 80 GSM paper. Um, some interesting, you know, shading and, and pooling here. Very, sh very shady ink, um, you know, very binary shading, it feels like, too. Uh, it's very hard-edged shades. Um, you've got, this is flex writing. You've got a kind of a pale. This is an ink that when it goes on light, it goes on pretty pale. It's one pass, two pass, three passes. Here are the same pens that we used a little earlier. Fairly long dry times on this ink. Um, not... Not the longest, and, and Rhodia paper is never particularly uh, fast drying, but this was uh, a little bit longer than average. Uh, no bleed through, and I can show you that here. Um, we've got a tiny little bit of bleed through here on flex writing, but I don't count flex writing. But even the multiple passes, you know, the, the three passes that I did, you can't, there's no bleed through at all on that. So this ink does very well on bleed. On color, Eh, it's okay. It's not my it's not my choice. No feathering, not terribly lubricated. Um, 
not terribly saturated, but high shading, there is no sheen on this ink. It is, it is a very matte finish ink. And it's pretty good on show through. There's not a lot of show through. Um, it's not very water resistant, but it'll leave a little bit behind. It doesn't like bleach at all. And uh, will leave a little bit behind with ammonia. So this is, a, this is an ink. You want to wash it away? Bleach will do that for you. Um, and then you can just see some of the tests that I did across your fine line, medium line, 1.5 millimeter, flex, and 3.8 millimeter. So that is the Franklin Christoph Tenebris Purpuratum on Rhodia. Let me now show you what it looks like on Tomoe River. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to show you these two side by side. Almost across the board, this, this ink did not love Tomoe River paper. Uh, it tended not to go down as thick or as wet. I think because the surface of the paper is a little bit more slick, um, it, none of the pens wrote as well on Tomoe River as they did on Rhodia. Um, so I, this is one where I probably wouldn't love using this ink on Tomoe River, just something to keep in mind. Uh, so if I move this out of the way, uh, again, you can see on the flex it is darker, although still not as dark as it was with the, uh, with the Rhodia. Three passes. Dry times on Tomoe River were bad. 50 second dry times, very, very slow dryer on this paper. No bleed. I can show you that again. There's a tiny bit of bleed up here at Flex, but like I said, I don't count that. And when I did this, there wasn't much bleed. There appears to be a little bit of red bleed through now. Um, so I'd probably drop that down to a nine color, five, a little lower on this paper than on the last. No feathering, not very lubricated, not very saturated, still a nice, good shader. You can see some pretty good shading there no sheen, and, uh, and some show through. And on this paper, the purple looks a lot dustier. If I put them side by side, it just looks a lot dustier on the Tomoe River than it does on the Rhodia. So if you like that dusty purple, Tomoe River might be a little bit better. And there's, you can see what it looks like in a very fine nib and fine writing. So those are, that's how this ink functions on these different papers. Um, for me, this is a, a, an ink that is a, this is a, a Rhodia, a paper with a little more tooth. I bet it looks great on Franklin Christoph paper. I just didn't have any to test it on. Um, so let me, let me pull out some samples here. So here is Tenebris Purpuratum. Some other ones, if you want to compare it to how it looks next to the old deep purple, it does have a bit more red in there. Um, here is Franklin Christoph's Black Cherry, which is another one of their new colors. Um, Diamine Merlot. You can see it's clearly more blue than the Merlot. Um, Diamine Grape. De Atramentis Aubergine. I like this a lot. This is probably one of my favorite purples. Um, a bit of similarity to the Ackermann Vorhut Violet. Um, a touch more red here and... Uh, Perhaps just a bit more saturation as well. Uh, this is Sailor Gentle Shigure, uh, almost a blue purple. This is this one I like a lot. This is Sailor Gentle Bung Box Sumeragi Imperial Purple, um, very blue. You can't see it well on the video, but there's a just a wicked sheen on this ink. I like that a lot. Uh, here is Roar and Klingner Scabiosa, Private Reserve Ebony Purple. Private Reserve Burgundy Mist, Hiroshizuku Murasaki Shikibu, or Shikibu, however, Pelican Edelstein Amethyst, Noodler's Violet, Mont Blanc Lavender Purple, and Caveco Summer, Summer Purple. So I will say that for the most part, Franklin Christoph, there weren't any that were super similar to this. If I had to pick one, I, or pick a couple, I'd say Burgundy Mist was probably pretty close. Uh, Black Cherry's kind of close. Um, yeah. Scabiosa is more red, but there's, there's kind of a similar matte quality to it. 
for Hoot Violet, it's a little more blue, um, but maybe deep. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, none of these are. And then they're they're deep purple. None of them are super close to Tenebris Purpuratum, so it's an ink shade that is kind of off on its own. Something to just keep in mind. So. Uh, thank you again to Franklin Kristoff for providing this ink sample. They actually provided me with uh, sample bottles of their whole line, so you'll be seeing more ink reviews from them coming up. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions about any of the other inks or about the Tenebris Purpuratum, please go ahead and send them to me. You can find me at Twitter, at Penhabit is my Twitter handle, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Penhabit. I am drchumley at... at uh, Instagram. And of course, you can always email me penhabit at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching. There will be more ink reviews coming up a little bit later in the season. So if you have questions, suggestions, things you'd like to see in the, or perhaps not see in future ink reviews, let me know. And uh, we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.